Hello, and welcome to Timing is Everything, a program of Care Dimensions. My name is Mary Crow, Director of Professional and Community Education at Care Dimensions. And today, we're thrilled to have on our show Dr. Stephanie Patel, who is our CEO of Care Dimensions. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, Mary. I'm delighted to be here. I love always having you. And you were on the show a while back. It's a, really a while back now. And yes. just thrilled to have you back. So could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and about your role at Care Dimensions? Sure. I've been at Care Dimensions for over 16 years now. So yes, it was a while ago that I was on the show before. Um, I was the chief medical officer at Care Dimensions, and I am now the CEO. That's great. Yeah, and, and again, just thrilled to have you on. And, you know, November is National Hospice and Palliative Care Month. So we're, we're here to celebrate that. So let's talk about that, too. So, you know, we, have, we both have been with the organization over 16 years. So can you talk a little bit about the, the changes, you know, in, in hospice care over, those, over that time? Sure. There have been many changes in hospice care, I'd have to say. I still feel like caring for those with serious illness is really at the forefront of healthcare at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and caring for people in the home has also moved into an important sl slot in healthcare. Um, the first hospice was started in 1978. And since then, I'm happy to report that the use of hospice has only been increasing every year, um, which is wonderful. In the beginning, I you know, mostly cancer patients were served by hospice, but today we see a wide variety of advanced illness, including um, dementia, cardiac disease, respiratory disease, Parkinson's disease. So more and more people looking to get the benefits of hospice care. Yeah, which I think is an important piece, Stephanie, because a lot of times, you know, people do, they hear the word hospice and they automatically think cancer. So I think that's an important point to bring up so that people are aware this is not just related for people with cancer, that this is open to other illnesses uh, and that uh, everybody, you know, if you, if you qualify to come on service, it's not the diagnosis that would keep you from doing that. Correct, absolutely. Hospice is for anyone that has yeah. And a life expectancy of six months or less, regardless of your diagnosis. Yeah. Sometimes people think, again, the age factor too, but let's clear that one up as well. Yes, yeah, so <clears throat> hospice services patients from birth um, all the way up until, you know, what we consider advanced age. So it is just not for those who are, you know, older, as yeah. we would say. Um, we, ha we have patients who are young, um, and we have those who are 113. Right, right. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and sadly, death is not a respecter of age. So yeah. we, and we have a, you know, a robust pediatric program and all of that. So it's important that people understand that it's really for people right across the, the age span. Yeah, unfortunately, death, you know, comes at, can come at any time right. in our lifetime. You know, it's something we're all going to experience. And I think the important thing is how you experience it and how your family experiences. Absolutely. And that's where hospice can really play an important role. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, that's the other piece, too, you had mentioned about, you know, how things have changed, about people wanting to hopefully be in the place that they choose uh, and, and, and home and all. Could, maybe you could talk a little bit about that, too, in terms of the types of setting that people can receive hospice care in. So people can receive hospice care in wherever they call home. So that could be your traditional home, that could be a nursing facility, a group home, an assisted living, um, you know, a friend's home. So pretty much wherever you call home, we come to. Yeah, and it was funny, once I had gone out and I was talking and somebody had said, okay, I, I wanna go on hospice, where do I go? <laughs> and I said, well, you don't have to go anywhere. You know, the hospice comes to you. Which Correct. is a nice feature. And I think some people mistakenly think there are hospice houses and hospice homes, um, and that's just one option. There are those organizations, uh, as Care Dimensions, we have two inpatient hospice facilities. There are um, for short stay periods when you have symptoms that can't be managed at your home setting or you know with your loved ones at home. 
Um, but there are also residential hospices where you can stay for a, a smaller extended period of time. But again, our services go wherever you are. Yeah, absolutely. we come to you. Yeah, which is again important that people know. You know, here we are. We you know, end of life is is, and I've you know, we've been doing this a long time, right? And I've been in this field for about thirty eight years now. I like to say I started at six, but we know otherwise, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I'll tell you, at this stage of life, this precious stage of life, which is called end of life. You know, everybody's going to get there. You know, wh whether it be ourselves or people that we love, but yet still, people they have a hard time saying hospice, talking about it, or even considering coming on to hospice. What, uh, you know, what would you say to that? How do, how do we respond to people in that way? Well, I think a lot of people fear death, mm -hmm. and people obviously equate hospice to death. Um, and in our society, death is something that we don't talk to, we don't talk about, we try to avoid, even as a doctor I was trained, you know, you try to avoid the words you're dying or death because those are taboo or seen somehow as a failure. In other cultures, it's just seen as part of life and death is part of life. I think we need to normalize the dying process and we need to make sure that we talk to our loved ones, our family, our friends about how we want to experience things when we are at the end of life. Yeah. And so I think we shy away from it in our culture and we avoid it and really we need to embrace it more. And anyone who has an experience with hospice will usually tell you, they tell me all the time, it's the best experience they've right. had yeah. in healthcare. And I think, <clears throat> we're, like I said, we're all gonna experience death. We can't avoid it, it's, yeah. it's, it's part of life. So that that we can make it um, something that's not so unknown, because obviously we're all afraid of the unknown, right. and that's normal too. Yeah, absolutely. So the more we can normalize it and talk about it, the less fearful I think it is. Yeah, definitely. And I think people don't need to fear hospice because, in all actuality, we're helping people at their most vulnerable. Yes. And we're bringing in services that are providing you know, comfort from uncomfortable, you know, pain or suffering. Plus we're bringing in a lot of knowledge and comfort for the family. And if they have a good experience, then they're not so afraid. And then if their children see a grandparent die or even a parent and, and it's not such a frightening thing, then, you know, we're sort of moving the the education forward about death being a normal part of life. Absolutely. And when this goes well, I mean, it really affects everybody involved, it does. doesn't it? Yes. You know, the patient, the family, and even the professional caregivers. Yeah. It makes all the difference in the world, and and that's why I, you know, I always say I feel so passionate about this. And and what part of the reason is is that, you know, this is uh, this is a very precious time of life, and we have one shot at this. Let's yep. do it right, and and that's uh, and that's what I think. Again, we're where we shine and, and, and that's important that people understand that they don't have to be alone in this journey. Yes, and nobody uh, should have to be alone. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that does that includes not just the patient but also the family um, yeah. or the friends and whoever you call family because yeah. everyone's family is different. And that's one of the one of the things that again that care uh, that uh, hospice does well, right? Is that they they understand that they don't just focus on dying is not just about the individual. This affects everybody involved. Right. And uh, that, then there's that focus on that. You know, you mentioned the the, the term too. I mean, because again, a lot of times people think that you're just kind of tending to the the physical and the the physical pain or symptoms, but they're really tending to more than that. Yes. Uh, so hospice uses a multidisciplinary team. So it's not just um, the nurse and the doctor. Not that they're not key as part of the team, but. There is a big, big presence of social work and chaplaincy and volunteers, complementary therapies, just so we can address not just physical suffering, but everything that's going on because you're losing something, you know, and right. there's a big loss there. Um, and that's the that's the, the really the benefit about having everybody involved to make sure all of that is tended to uh, during this time. You know, it's uh, still people come on service so late. Do you, you know, have you, you've seen this over the years. Yeah. 
and <coughs> even and, and you know actually before we talk about that too let me just go back to one other thing that you had said you know a, this word you know kind of people have this negative connotation because they hear hospice and they think death or dying you know when I think of hospice I actually think of life and yeah. living right and I think a lot of us who do this kind of work understand that and feel the same way that really what hospice does it does truly help people to live for whatever time they have left. Exactly, and that's how I explain it to people, is yeah. our goal is to allow you to live the best life that you can for that time that you have left. Yeah. You know, we've celebrated, you know, weddings, yeah. graduations, sent people on trips, yeah. you know, just so they can do all those things that they want to do. It's not just, it's not about dying. Right, yeah. That and is, you know, what happens in the end, right. but it really yeah. is about living during that last period of your life absolutely yeah and that's that's the beauty of it too because again i think people hear this and they think it's like take to the bed wait for the medical <laughs> yeah. event to happen no 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 yeah. that's not what we want to see so like you say uh how how do you use that time how can we help you to use that time and to feel as well as possible right. during that time so you can do those things so so again people coming on too late you know and and a lot of times that happens so talk about that for a little bit yeah, so I think <clears throat> although we've been around since 1974 and we are reaching a lot more people, I mm -hmm. still think there is this stigmatism that it's hospice, death, you know, taking to the bed and yes. death. It's really become sort of that medical event, which death really isn't a medical event. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, even in this age, recent studies show that 53% of people only receive hospice for 30 days or less, mm -hmm. and 28% only have it for seven days oh, wow. or less. So we're okay. still thinking of it, you know, as as a medical event and yeah. something that happens at just at the very, very end. Yeah. And unfortunately, that doesn't leave the hospice team enough time to help the patient and the loved the loved ones, their family, really get all the support and um, experience the true, you know, joy that can be hospice care. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I feel like, um, you know, we're still, well, of course, here in Massachusetts, this is the mecca of, mm -hmm. of medical care. So we're still pursuing treatments and, um, you know, surgeries, et cetera, until that very, very end. And then people say, oh, wait, this is the time for hospice where I, f I really feel that um, we need to do that sooner and have yeah. people really realize that just think of hospice as another form of treatment. It's treatment for right. you, your family, your soul. Yes, it's really, it's a part of the continuum yes. of care. The problem is that it doesn't get talked about until the, the very end. Right. So that this is something that we should be talking about well in advance when things are well. Right, Right. Exactly. Is that this is something that you're entitled to, a benefit, this wonderful benefit you're entitled to uh, that can really make such a difference at this stage of life. You know, and, and you were talking about, we, we really are in the medical mecca, aren't we? <laughs> and, and you know, that double-edged sword there, isn't there? Because yeah. we are so lucky because, I mean, people come from all around, right, to come to, the, to, to Boston to get this type of care to, to and all of that, but there's also the double-edged sword is even when medical intervention is no longer useful or helpful then you know I, I think it can start to detract from from quality and quantity of life it can and I also think you know as a doctor I see that it's not it's not in the medical mecca it's not the top priority to think about okay maybe there are no more treatments or surgeries or procedures that would be helpful at this time and maybe the best thing is to maximize the quality of life that you have but in somewhat in a, we may see that as a failure sometimes that we could not you know save somebody or heal someone but you really have to think about the fact that again everybody is going to face death right. at some point whether they have a medical illness or not some of us yeah. just get older so yeah. um, we are going to all experience it, and we have to, again, start thinking about it in a, 
in a different way so that people can take advantage of hospice earlier. Yeah, exactly. You know, you were saying about when people are waiting so long, so there's, there's the old adage of it's always too soon before it's too late, right? Yeah. So we wait and we wait and we wait <laughs> and we wait, and then really people call us in or call hospice in when people are actively dying. So, and that's, that's part of the hard part of why I think hospice gets this that's connotation, right? You're right, you're very right. And I think the thing we hear working in hospice, I'm sure you've heard it for years, is I wish I'd called hospice sooner because yeah. um, it is so helpful for everybody involved yeah. um, that I don't think I've ever heard, oh, I should have called you later. I right, do. I, <laughs> I should not have called you <laughs> no, or we didn't need you. So yeah. No, I've never, never heard that at all, you know. But it's, it's too bad, though, because I think, again, when, you know, and, and I actually had a family once say to me, you know, Gee, well, geez, I brought hospice in, and then my loved one died three days later. Well, it's because they waited until right. the person was dying, and they were going to die three days later. Yeah. So, again, it, you know, it, that word hospice, it, it's not a bad word. It yeah. doesn't mean death or dying. It means to tend to, right. to host, right? So it means hospitality. So, again, a lot of times we're having to change mindsets here. Yeah. And that's not always easy. It is not. And again, I think even in the 40 years we've been doing hospice, mm. over 40 years here at Care Dimensions, it's been a slow change yeah. that's that's happening. Yeah. But I, I, it really is reassuring to hear the number increase that yes. you spoke about earlier because I think people are... They're, they're understanding it more. So, but, but I still think we have a ways to go. I agree. Yeah. So what do you think is, uh, tell me like the thing that you think hospice is so so great for. What What's the benefit, how it can be so helpful? Oh, there's too many things. I couldn't <laughs> tell you just one thing. I mean, I, I think there's the the nursing that comes to you, the, the physicians that come to you. The mm -hmm. key are the hospice certified aides that come and help with, you know, personal care as well as the social workers and chaplains volunteers, all the community com complementary therapies that you can get. Um, but what people probably know the least is that people at hospice are available 24-7. Mm -hmm. So we're always here, you know, at Care Dimensions, a nurse always answers the phone. If you call in, there's a nurse working 24-7. And yeah. if, if needed, they'll come out and visit you. Yeah. So yeah. I think that people don't really realize that it is a full wraparound, you know, supportive service for patients right. and families that's available 24-7. Yeah, I think I don't think people understand that at all. And I think people feel so alone in this process. That's why I think that's such a big factor there, to know that around, because sometimes people get, the, you know, they think, oh, 24-hour care. No, no, intermittent care yeah. that's available around the clock. And when you call, you're getting, you're getting a clinician. Right. And they can go out, right? And that's the thing, I think that's so important for people because I think they can feel so scared and alone, but to know that you have that safety net, I think is a huge thing. Yeah, I, I know for me, that is one of the things that when I explain to patients, I said, uh, you know, I explain to them and make sure they realize it's intermittent care, but it's around the clock intermittent care as far as you can get it. If your need is at 1 a.m. or your yeah. need is at 1 p.m., you know, you're able to get a nurse or, or social worker or whoever you need to get to help you at that time, yeah. they're available. Because yeah. that distress is not always the physical. It could be the emotional and right. the spiritual stuff. So that's something that people don't realize too, that a social worker or a chaplain can go out at that time as well. And I think a lot of people who experience hospice um, that didn't realize that, they will say that you know, when they um, write their notes to us or things, yeah. they'll just really say, you know, they were always there whenever I needed them. You know, I would call and they were so helpful even if it was in the middle of the night. Yeah, so yeah, that's, which is wonderful. It must be so nice for you to have these notes coming in and to see uh, really how people have been touched by the, by the service. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. What about, um, you know, you had mentioned, I just wanna, because sometimes people aren't gonna know what complementary therapies are. Do you mind just, uh, and to, you know, just talk a little bit about, because people here, well, what is that, you know? Sure, so uh, complementary therapies are, are therapies, as we call them, or treatments, modalities that are outside, you know, the normal medical care. So it's things like pet therapy and music therapy and massage therapy, Reiki, 
um, that really help again with not just physical symptoms, but um, your emotional well-being. Yeah. And so we rely a lot on those in hospice, you know, to balance out all of the the traditional medical. Yeah. So they're the, just that, right? The complementary yes, traditional exactly. medicine, which is beautiful. And I, I think it's important for people, because I always like people to be good consumers. Uh, and the way of doing that is by understanding not all hospices have those things. You know, so you've talked of a couple of things here today that, again, I think people think kind of it's an across the board. Not all hospices are alike and they're not related. Uh, so I think it's important that people understand that. Yeah, hospices are very individual. So um, Care Dimensions happens to be the largest hospice in Massachusetts. We have two inpatient units. Um, several, you know, there are a lot of hospices that don't have access to an inpatient unit. Yeah. Um, we also have a very robust um, complementary therapy program, yeah. which again, there are a lot of hospices that don't have. We also have the benefit of a very robust um, Center for Grief and Healing, yeah. which helps you know, families after the loss of their loved one, but also they um, also help a lot of children who have yeah. lost um, family members, regardless of the reason. So there's a lot of emphasis there on just um, grief and healing. Yes, and, and children grieve differently, and it's important that we understand that, and there are child life specialists on service. Correct, and that's um, actually not, that's pretty rare in hospice yeah. when you look even around the country um, yeah. to have a number, the number of child life therapists that we have. Yeah. That's um, but outside of hospice, Care Dimensions also has been a very early adopter of palliative care. So we have a very big... Um, adult and pediatric palliative care programs. Which is important too because again sometimes and, and can you do you mind I know it's hard to like in, to encapsulate in a, just a sentence or two but it, you know talk a little bit about the distinction because people hear palliative and they're like wait is it palliative hospice? So talk a little bit about that for a minute. So palliative care is the same philosophy as hospice. It is really focused on your quality of life but it happens at the same time as you're getting um, your medical, any of your regular medical treatments, yeah. so any curative treatments or surgeries. So, and they're focusing really again on your mm -hmm. physical and emotional well-being, mm -hmm. and trying to maximize your quality of life while you're going through any types of treatments for your serious illness. Yeah, which is excellent. So, so you talked about that, and there's that uh, care dimensions, right? The dimensions of care yeah. being the hos palliative hospice and support services, which you talked about. Right. Um, home MD. So Home MD is um, Care Dimensions primary care at home program. So we are seeing uh, patients who are over 65 who are home limited, meaning that it's very difficult for them to get out to get to see the doctor and we're just coming to them again as we do yeah. and providing their primary care. That is huge, right? Because a, a lot of people are struggling yes. uh, to do that. So that's a, that's a wonderful addition as well. So what do, you, what do you want people to know about other things you want people to know about Care Dimensions and, and how Care Dimensions can be a benefit? I think the big thing I'd like people to know is that if you have a family member who's suffering from serious illness and you and or they need support, that looking to Care Dimensions, we can help you decide where, which program you fit in. So maybe you're not ready for hospice or you don't need hospice, but palliative care might be helpful or even the home primary care program might be helpful. So just remembering to think about um, care dimensions and the services that we offer. Yeah, and, and those distinct differences, right? You talked about the, the physicians and, and the nurse practitioners and the nurse, the, that team too. Uh, those are differences they in are. terms of yes. just the number of physicians that we have on service, that sort of thing. So that's important that people understand. And that, again, there's that the good educated consumer, right, in understanding and asking questions like this, because that can make a whole di bit of difference for people. It can, yes. So um, other things that you want to highlight I know we, we only have a couple of minutes left here but I, I want to make sure again I mean this so, we could go on and on about this topic uh, but I just want to make sure if there's anything else that you can think of around uh, other uh, hospice or care dimensions what do you what are you seeing for the future for hospice I don't 
think that hospice is going anywhere. I'm, what I'm hoping for the future is that um, we can expand to help people in the last year of life instead of the last six months yeah. of life and that, you know, again, we can get to people earlier. Um, yeah. I think that Honestly, if you're thinking that hospice might be right for you, it probably is yeah, because it's often the thoughts come too late. Or if your doctor, you know, is thinking about it, um, then it probably is right for you. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. The other part of that, too, is that people don't have to wait to hear it from the physician because no. maybe the physician, it's not on their radar, no. right? Uh, so people, you know, anybody can make that referral. Anybody can, and I often tell people that you or your caregiver or your loved one probably knows before the doctor does mm -hmm. because uh, we as doctors see you in our office and you're probably at your best when we see you mm -hmm. so um, we don't see everything that's always going on at home in their in your everyday life so yeah. you should um, if you're thinking about it you can call your loved one can call you can also bring it up to your doctor who may say oh yeah I didn't think about that yeah absolutely you know, so, yeah um, don't be afraid to bring it up yeah have these conversations yes. have them early don't wait till crisis right because we know these conversations with our loved ones and just about what wishes are in general I mean here we are all living through a pandemic. This should be our, our biggest Thanks. teachable moment ever. Right. And again, I still think people are had us hesitant to do this. Have these conversations early, not in crisis, not in the ER, not in the ICU. Yes, don't be afraid to talk about it. And, yeah. and people will say, well, if I talk about it, then it's gonna yeah. happen, or yeah. you, make, you make death a reality. Well, it's gonna eventually happen. Right. It's, yeah. you know, again, what really matters is you know how you experience that and right. you know how you can live the last period in your life exactly yeah so we can dismiss the magical thinking that talking about it will not make it exactly. happen <laughs> and by not talking <laughs> right. about it isn't going to keep it from, from happening, happening. Right. so so that's important well stephanie thank you so much for being on the show today we really appreciate this and again it's it's nice to celebrate another year of hospice and palliative care month uh you know it's it's a it's really a big thing and i love to hear listen hospice uh it, you know it's always going to be essential for people and and i just want more and more people to learn and to understand this as we go along so we're going to keep at it so thank you you're welcome hopefully i will be back again you there. sure will <laughs> the invite will surely be there <laughs> thanks a lot stephanie thank you all and welcome and thanks for joining in today for timing is everything and look forward to having you at our next program More than ever, it's your sanctuary. But if you're caring for a loved one with advanced illness, it can feel isolating and worrisome. Care Dimensions can help. As Massachusetts' leading hospice provider, you can count on us for guidance, medical care, and support. We follow all COVID-19 safety precautions to protect you and your family, so you don't have to delay getting the care you need. Visit Care Dimensions online or give us a call.